Finding the general rule or recurrence relation of a sequence. Good day everyone. This is Teacher Astrid. This time, we'll be discussing about finding the general rule or recurrence relation of a sequence. In a preceding lesson, we have already discussed that a sequence is a set of numbers or objects that follow a certain pattern or general rule. We also found out that if you are given the general rule or recurrence relation, you can obtain the terms of a sequence by substituting n equals 1 for the first term, n equals 2 for the second term, n equals 3 for the third term, and so on and so forth. Ang ibig sabihin nito, ang values ng n sa sequence ay mga elements of the set of natural numbers or counting numbers. So ngayon, ang hahanapin naman natin ay ang general rule or recurrence relation ng sequence kung given ang mga terms. Reminder, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell after the lesson so that you will be updated with the lessons of Pinoy Math. To start with, before we can get the general rule or recurrence relation, we must first determine what is the pattern of the sequence. There are sequences wherein you are adding constant numbers. Ang unang grupo ng sequence ay yung mga multiples ng numbers. Naalala nyo yung inyong multiplication table? Dati di ba nag-recite kayo nito? Ito yung unang klase natin. Halimbawa nito ay yung 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Ito yung mga klase na nag i counting ka. Ang sumunod na klase ng sequence ay yung mga sequence na nag add ka pa rin ng constant number pero hindi sila multiples of any number. Halimbawa nito ay ang 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on and so forth. Dito, nag add ka ng 2 pero hindi siya multiple ng kahit na anong number. Now, let us have some examples. In the sequence 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on and so forth, these are multiples of 5. Here, the first term is 5, the second term is 10, the third term is 15, the fourth term is 20, and so on. Please recall that our n is the set of natural numbers or counting numbers. For the first term, n equals 1. For the second term, n equals 2. For the third term, it is 3. And for the fourth term, it is 4. If we put the values on a table, we have the values of n as 1, 2, 3, 4. And for A's of N, we have 5, 10, 15, and 20. Checking further, we can rewrite the values of A's of N as 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, and 5 times 4. Dahil dito, maaari na natin sabihin na A's of N is equal to 5n. That is actually the general rule or recurrence relation of the sequence. Let us try another example. The sequence 3, 6, 9, 12, and so on are multiples of what number? If your answer is 3, then you are correct. Here, the first term is 3, the second term is 6, the third term is 9, 
and the fourth term is 12. We can rewrite the first term as 3 times 1, the second term as 3 times 2, the third term as 3 times 3, and the fourth term as 3 times 4. Just like on the first example, we can therefore conclude that a sub n is equal to 3n. How about for 7, 14, 21, 28, and so on and so forth? These are multiples of 7. Therefore, the general rule must be a sub n equals 7n. Therefore, the sequence which are multiples of a number x has a general rule of a sub n equals x times n. So, sa 10, 20, 30, 40, ano ang general rule? The answer is a sub n equals 10n. In a sequence where the terms are not multiples of a number, but still you are adding a constant, I would suggest the following formula, which we will be discussing on the next videos. Example number 3. In the sequence 3, 8, 13, 18, and so on and so forth, we are adding 5. Here, we can use the formula a of n is equal to d times the quantity n minus 1 plus a sub 1, where a sub 1 is the first term, d is the constant number being added to the terms, and n is the set of natural or counting numbers. Since the number being added is 5, we have a sub n is equal to 5 times the quantity n minus 1 plus 3. Simplifying further, we have a sub n is equal to 5n minus 5 plus 3. Therefore, a sub n is equal to 5n minus 2. By checking and substituting the values of n as 1, 2, 3, and 4 to the formula, we'll get the terms of the sequence which are 3, 8, 13, and 18, and so on and so forth. Example number 4. 5, 12, 19, 26, ellipsis. Here, what number are you adding? Correct, it is 7. And the first term is 5. Using the formula and simplifying, we get a of n is equal to 7 times n minus 1 plus 5. Simplifying further, we have a of n is equal to 7n minus 2. By checking and substituting the values of n, will you get the same terms? Yes, therefore, our answer is correct. Now try 1, 5, 9, 13, and ellipsis. What is the number being added? It is 4. And what is our first term? It's 1. Using the formula, we have a of n is equal to 4 times n minus 1 plus 1. So therefore, the general rule is 4n minus 3. For sequences where you are multiplying by a constant, we can use the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n, where r is the number being multiplied to the terms, and a sub 1 is the first term. Again, 
And here is the set of counting numbers or the set of natural numbers. Example number 5. In the sequence 2, 6, 18, and ellipsis, we are multiplying by 3. Using the formula and substituting r equals 3 and a sub 1 equals 2, we will have the formula a sub n is equal to 2 times 3 raised to the n minus 1. Let us again check by substitution. We can now therefore conclude that a sub n is equal to 2 times 3 raised to n minus 1. Another example. In the sequence 100, 50, 25, and ellipsis, we are multiplying by 1 half or dividing by 2. Therefore, our R is 1 half and our A sub 1 is 100. Substituting it to our formula, we have A sub N is equal to 100 times 1 half raised to the N minus 1. Paano uli nakuha ang R as 1 half? Dinivide natin ang second term sa first term. So, dinivide natin ang 50 sa 100. So, it is 50 over 100 or in lowest term, 1 over 2 or 1 half. Example number 7. We have the sequence 4, negative 12, 36, and so on and so forth. Here, a sub 1 is 4, and r is negative 3. Please take note that the signs are changing because r, or the number that's being multiplied, is negative 3. Pag nagmumultiply ka sa negative number ng paulit-ulit, magiging alternate ang sign. Pag sinubstitute natin ang r equals negative 3 at a sub 1 equals 4, makukuha natin ang general rule na a sub n is equal to 4 times negative 3 raised to the n minus 1. So sa sequence na 3, 15, 75, ano ang ating r? Correct. 5. Ano ang ating a sub 1? 3. Therefore, a sub n is equal to 3 times 5 raised to the n minus 1. Paano naman kung sa sequence ay hindi ka nag a o nagmumultiply ng constant number sa mga terms? For this kind of sequences, we must list the values of n and a sub n and write them on a table. Example number 8. We have the sequence 1, 4, 9, 16, and ellipsis. The values of n are 1, 2, 3, and 4. And for the values of a sub n, we have 1, 4, 9, 16. We can see that a sub n is the square of n. Therefore, a sub n is equal to n squared. Example number 9. We have the sequence 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 4 fifths, and ellipses. Here, we have n as 1, 2, 3, and 4. And for a sub n, we have 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, and 4 over 5. We can see that the numerators are identical with the values of n. And the denominators are obtained by adding 1 to n. 
Therefore, our a sub n is equal to n all over n plus 1. Example number 10. Find the recurrence relation of the sequence 1, negative 4, 9, negative 16. You can see that the numbers are squares of n, but the signs are alternate. Here, we can use the expression negative 1 raised to the n minus 1. Therefore, a sub n is equal to negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 times n squared. Now, try to find the recurrence relation for the sequence 1, e 27. If your answer is a sub n is equal to n q, then you are correct. Now that ends our lesson. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more Pinoy math videos. Happy learning! Thank you.